Hi, I'm Antonio Mora. If you ever doubted that the right and the left live in alternate political universes in this country, the dishonesty displayed by many politicians and members of the media this week in the context of the impeachment proceedings should put those doubts to rest. Kellyanne Conway may wish she never said alternative facts, but she turned out to be an accidental prophet. Every statement and anything that happens is subject to such divergent interpretations that you have to wonder whether politically polarized Americans can agree on anything. Look at the call with the president of Ukraine. Trump called it a perfect and beautiful conversation. Senator Graham called it a nothing burger. Many Republicans and others at the White House thought releasing the transcript was a good thing proving President Trump didn't ask for a quid pro quo in exchange for dirt on Biden. On the other hand, Democrats reacted to the release of the transcript by saying the opposite, that Trump had just impeached himself, insisting the whole conversation was about what the U.S. would do for Ukraine as long as Trump got help against Biden in the 2020 election. The problem for the White House is that Nancy Pelosi didn't mention a quid pro quo even once during her official address to the country where she announced formal impeachment proceedings against Trump. In fact, she seemed to very much want to avoid no quid pro quo becoming Trump's new version of no collusion. She said, quote, don't get caught up in the trap of, oh, there is no quid pro quo. No, he asked for assistance from the foreign government. That's wrong, end of quote. The problem for Democrats is that almost everyone who had been watching liberal news outlets and listening to other Capitol Hill Democrats was expecting to see more of a, an explicit quid pro quo request in the call because that's what they had repeatedly promised. Suddenly, for those inclined to support Trump, it seemed like his opponents were moving the goalposts. The reaction to the whistleblower complaint is more of the same. Democrats are crying cover-up because the, alleged, the whistleblower alleged that senior White House officials ordered the removal of the electronic transcript from the computer system where it was stored to a separate system for classified information sensitive to national security. The White House has now admitted that. Trump opponents then conclude that it shows the White House had a guilty conscience, understanding the gravity of what they say is Trump's malfeasance in that call. Republicans say the complaint is all hearsay and that there's no cover-up involved in the transfer from one system to another. They say it's perfectly appropriate because Trump has seen his conversations with foreign leaders leaked repeatedly since the beginning of his presidency. The media, as usual, especially cable news, is muddying the waters as well. Many supposed news shows have given up on having balanced panels with pundits acting as a Greek chorus with everyone saying the same thing. Sadly, what we're seeing is partisanship masquerading as news coverage. On the right, many at Fox News are acting as if they were Trump's defense team, attacking Trump's attackers, accusing an organized cabal within the intelligence community and a deep state of doing everything possible to undercut his presidency, dismissing the whistleblower complaint as the new Steele dossier, reminding us constantly that impeachment isn't popular with most Americans, and in a case study of what aboutism, focusing ad nauseum on the allegations against Biden and his son, Hunter. They also do their best to avoid addressing the basic question of whether Trump violated the law by asking Ukraine for help in the investigation of the Bidens, or what in the world Rudy Giuliani was doing in the middle of all of it. On the left, CNN and MSNBC have become anti-Trump prosecutors and impeachment cheerleaders. They've both gone into round-the-clock impeachment coverage, ignoring almost any other news. They have also completely dismissed the, rele the relevance of the Biden allegations, with MSNBC going as far as cutting away from a Trump press conference, saying, we hate to do this, but the president isn't telling the truth, then proceeding to defend the Bidens. On the left-leaning networks, good luck finding any information about the whistleblower's alleged bias or how Ukraine's president and other Ukrainian officials said they didn't feel pressured by Trump. Didn't they learn a lesson over there about overhyping from the Russia collusion investigation? Trump's actions raise serious questions that need to be soberly investigated and analyzed. One basic question is, what was Trump thinking in bringing up Biden with the Ukrainians? Did he learn nothing from the Mueller investigation and the legal jeopardy his own son was in for talking to Russians? Anyone paying a smidgen of attention for the past two years would know that asking another country for help in an election is illegal. 
Did Trump freelance in making the Biden request on the Ukraine call? Did aides at the White House know he was going to do it? If they knew, why didn't they stop him? Who thought this was a good idea? But Democrats, again, led by House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff and liberal media outlets, don't seem to have learned much either. They need to be aware that many Americans are going to see their hyperbole as bordering on a boy who cried wolf scenario, having seen their more dire predictions in the Russia meddling investigation fizzle. In conclusion, House Democrats have boxed themselves in, and I think they now have no choice but to impeach Trump. They already have what they argue is sufficient evidence that Trump violated at least one law and abused his office, meeting the high crimes and misdemeanors standard of Article II of the Constitution. Barring any major new revelations, the Senate will then almost certainly follow the precedent set by Democrats in Bill Clinton's impeachment and fail to reach the two-thirds majority needed to convict Trump and remove him from office. The end result? Even more political polarization.